I think in that whole chapter, there's only a couple verses that preachers today would feel uh, comfortable. Most preachers today feel comfortable preaching to make sure they get some. And uh, so, a lot, a lot in that chapter. I'm not going to break the chapter down. There's only one verse, and we're talking about old Baptist uh, hobby horses. So you can probably guess which verse we're going to, right? <laughs> but first, let me say this. I wanted to point. I wanted to say. Uh, thank you to uh, brother, brother David tonight for filling in, and thank you to instrumentalists. Uh, Mrs. Miss, uh, uh, Katie, I know, practices these songs, and I don't want to take that for granted. Sharice, too, I know it there in Iola, she practices songs because Valerie's not playing right now and, and does a great job, but I oftentimes overlook that and don't think about the work that goes into that. And really, my wife kind of spoiled me on that because she is, for many years, just uh, played and, and studied and practiced. And, and as, you know, I could just pick a song, just random off the cuff, which I most of the time do, <laughs> and she just plays it. So I don't think about that sometimes, and I, we kind of put a lot on the instrumentalists. I want to thank you ladies for doing that. The, people don't sometimes think about all the time and work and training and study that's gone into doing that. And then, Brother David, uh, thank you tonight uh, for filling in. I'm not quite sure what happened to Brother Nick. If anyone knows, I hope he's okay. I didn't ever hear from him, uh, but didn't make it out tonight. But uh, Brother David filled in, and, and you know, he said, I don't have a tie. And this happened one time. Brother Austin came out to uh, Iola, and I had him get up there, and he didn't have a tie. He's like, oh, man, I didn't have a tie on. And so he, you know, found somebody to give him a tie, and he came up here. And quite honestly, I was like, eh, no big deal. That's no, it's all right. But he, he did that. And I think it's funny because the, the message tonight is on the, our attire, <laughs> our attire. And I'm not actually going to deal with the preacher's attire or the person's attire up in the platform. I think I'm going to deal with that in a separate uh, sermon, and that's not tonight. But we are talking about attire, as you might have figured out from the fact that we're in Deuteronomy 22. And we'll get to that back to that verse in a little bit. Uh, but uh, the title of the message is, of course, the series is Revisiting Old Baptist Hobby Horses, those things that historically were preached. And back in the, the 40s and 50s and 60s, even 70s, you heard a lot of preaching on uh, our, our garments, another word that you use, apparel, attire, any of those uh, words we find in the Bible. We heard a lot of preaching on that, and it seems like nowadays there's just no distinction almost. It's just like, ah, you know, clothes aren't important. Clothes don't really matter. And I understand where some of that comes from. Uh, I un understand that we're concerned about people's souls more than we are what they wear and all that stuff. But I believe, again, this is one of those things. The Bible has a lot to talk about the clothes that we wear and our attire. And so I'm going to preach on this, and I think it's something that should be preached on. But if you want to offend somebody fast, preach on their clothes. <laughs> you know, a close second, I would say, would be the music. If you want to preach against the music, type of music that somebody listens to. But I'm telling you, the, the fastest way to offend somebody nowadays is start talking about their clothing. And they will get upset. Okay, So, so we're going to do that tonight. Not because I want to offend anybody, because I feel like we ought to preach the whole Bible. And that's the purpose of this series. Is that I think there's a lot of things that preachers have gotten away from preaching because they don't want to offend anybody. And the fact is, look, I just preached several messages here of late on not offending people uh, and you know, not being the offender and submitting ourselves one to another and all this gushy love stuff. Right? But the fact is we know that people are going to be offended by the Word of God, and we don't want to go around just offending people, but we, we do want to preach the whole counsel of God. And so we're going to talk about attire, and the Bible actually has a lot to say about attire. Again, I'm going to use the word attire generically speaking, but our garments, our apparel, what we put on, the Bible has a lot to say. And I'm only going to scratch the surface, but I want to talk about uh, this. Number one, so uh, no particular order here, but number one, the Bible talks about the attire of a bride or a bridegroom. I'm going to put them both together, start in Isaiah 49. Isaiah 49, and look at verse 18. It says, Lift up thine eyes round about, and behold, 
All these gather themselves together and come to thee. As I live, saith the Lord, thou shalt surely clothe thee uh, with them all as with an ornament and bind them on thee as a bride doeth. Now, it's not super important what the context of that is, but you see there it's talking about binding on ornaments and all this kind of stuff. And so we see the idea of ornaments being tied to them. Uh, this is a time to celebrate. This is a time to break out the, the good stuff, the ornaments. You know, I think about accessories, you know, uh, cufflinks and, uh, and jewelry and earrings and all that kind of stuff. Look, this is oftentimes pictured as something that a bride would put on. Look at uh, chapter 61, still in Isaiah, chapter 61, 10. I don't mean to say the context isn't important, but I mean to this message, context, the context there isn't important. Chapter 61, verse 10 says, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in God, for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. So you see this festive occasion to dress up and to wear all these things, and, and, uh, and even the bridegroom, it says, uh, does this for his wedding day. It's a special occasion. I don't, uh, I'll, I'll get into that a little bit more, but interesting, he talks about clothes, and it makes a comparison to being clothed with salvation. And you think about this one time, I don't, I don't know how what what how literal it is but i believe that there is a garment some garment that's given to us you know in the in the millennia or or actually before that just in heaven in general a garment given we know we're clothed in Christ's righteousness so some of that is symbolic uh, but i don't know what kind of clothes we're going to be wearing in heaven but it's interesting how he talks about the uh, attire of a bride and a bridegroom look at revelation 21 So I don't know, maybe we will be in heaven, we'll be decked with ornaments and fancy clothing and all that. Chapter 21, verse 2, And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Now, when the Bible describes what heaven looked like, what's it talk about? All the jewels, right? All the stones and the bright colors and all this kind of stuff shining down. And so it kind of makes you think like, hey, that's some glorious apparel, like a woman would put on jewels and all that kind of stuff. And let me say this, I do believe there's a time to dress up. There's a time for special occasions. Now look, we live in a society now where you go to a wedding and people show up in shorts and flip flops and it's no big deal. I mean, hopefully the bride and groom won't, but you know, or, or, you know, you go to a, a fancy restaurant. I don't know, maybe these people just go there every day, so it's no big deal to them, but I take my wife out. Okay, she's more concerned about me dressing up than I am, but try to dress up a little bit, <laughs> right? Because it's a special occasion. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't think you can prove to me from the Bible that it's wrong to ever uh, dress up. I believe that there is an occasion, but, you know, I don't think it's something that we should do all the time. That would kind of take away from it being an exciting occasion, first of all. Second of all, when you start wearing flashy things all the time, you're worried about the shining uh, cufflinks and all the fancy attire, all, all this stuff, and, and, and you're doing it all the time, it becomes flashy. It becomes uh, the opposite of modest, right? Because you're wanting everybody to see you, and you're showing off all your earrings and your jewelry and all the fancy clothing that you have. I don't believe that that's the way a Christian ought to live. Like, we don't want to just constantly be just overly decked with uh, ornaments and, and fancy, costly uh, uh, apparel and all that kind of stuff. But there's a time to do that. And I think it's like, again, hey, we live pretty simple in our life now. And as Christians, you know, we would sacrifice a lot. We give up a lot. If our, if our only purpose in life was to get money and riches, maybe we'd go out there and be fancy all the time and eat the fancy foods and go fancy dining and, 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 and all that kind of stuff. But that's not our life now. Hey, in heaven, we're going to be eating fancy. We're, we're going to be feasting. I believe that. We're going to be dressed up. We're going to be, you know, it's a special occasion. I don't know how, what all we're going to wear, but you understand there's a time. And so I'm, I'm trying to make a little application here, but the point is simply this. The Bible does talk about attire of a bride and a bridegroom. And I don't think there's anything wrong with a special time 
Just like feasting. There's nothing wrong with feasting, right? There's times of celebration, times where the Bible even or uh, uh, put into practice, say, this special feast day where you'll eat a certain way and there would be all this feasting. That's okay, but we don't want to just live like that every day. That's not, our, that's not our purpose. Now, what about going to church? And again, I, I will save this for another time as far as the attire of a pastor. I don't have a jacket today, ironically, <laughs> right? But uh, why it's imp you know, important to dress up or how much should we dress up? Is this even important? And, uh, and I'll address that on another day. But let me just say this. I do believe that there is a, kind of like just a, even in your regular clothing, obviously you're going to go work hard. You're going to get dirty. You know, there's different times, uh, you know, and our job might require a certain, uh, you know, getting our hands dirty or whatever. But I do think that Christians as a whole ought to try to present themselves and to be neat and to be, uh, you know, uh, that's kind of like why if you go to some, you know, for instance, a lot of Baptist youth camps will require all the guys to tuck in their shirts when they go to chapel. And everybody hates this rule. Come on, we're camping. Hey, this is dumb. Well, it's just trying to teach kids that you should try to look neat and presentable. The Bible has a lot to say about coming out from the world and being separate, right, and looking different. Uh, I don't think we have to wear any kind of crazy garments or uh, an Amish hat or, you know, have a certain... Uh, uh, type of clothing that we'd be recognized as a certain people. But I do think it would be nice if when we walked around, people would just assume, hey, that, that couple over there looks like Christian couple. You know, now if you're a lady and you wear a long skirt and you have long hair, they're probably going to say, hey, she must be religious, right? But guys, a lot of times we don't have any identif <laughs> identifying marks. Uh, you know, you go out soul winning. Uh, we were asked tonight, you guys aren't Jehovah's Witnesses, are you? <laughs> Right, by the same lady that didn't want the masks, by the way. But anyway, you're not Jehovah's Witnesses, are you? No. Well, and I and I told her, I said, you know, that's funny you say that. I specifically have been like trying to avoid wearing certain clothing when I go door knocking because so many times people don't want to answer the door because they think you're part of a certain group. Well, is it wrong for us to wear a suit and a tie whenever we go door knocking? No. But I do think that regardless of what we wear, I think we ought to be presentable, kind of look clean cut and be uh, 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 nice looking and uh, look like Christians. But I don't think that we should go around gaudy all the time, flashy, trying to wear the nicest clothes, name brand, you know, everybody look at me, fancy hairstyles over the top type things. I think that is kind of like something that is opposed to what you would see a Christian dress like. That doesn't mean we got to look you know, always go around, you know, looking a certain way, plain and, and uh, you know, uh, I don't know, because I, I probably dress that way, so I don't know uh, what that would be bad, but that, that you don't have to do that all the time. But I'm just saying, we don't want to go flashy, you know, like every day, like we're going to a wedding. Every day, I remember uh, going, to cam uh, going camping, all right, and this is a church camp, so it's not quite like tent camping or something like that, but going camping, and we would just a regular day, everybody's going out to play, and these girls would come out with these uh, high heels and like a dress like they're going to a, a ball or something like that. And I'm like, what is going on? And they're just trying to get attention or something like that. But I'm saying we don't want to go out just flashy all the time and overdress, but there's a time to dress up for a special occasion, okay? So here is the second point that I want to make. Now, you actually can tie these two together. The person that goes around flashy all the time, trying to get attention, uh, this could fit in this category. But the second one is the attire of a harlot. The attire of a harlot. Now, now, okay, let's go back for a second. Bride, bridegroom, it, it really doesn't matter what the custom was back in the Bible days. If I say bride and bridegroom, you in your mind right now are thinking, what does a bride and a bridegroom look like, right? What is the, he's going to have a tuxedo? Maybe a lot of people are getting away from that, but tuxedo white. She's going to have a white dress. You know, it's it's a little bit flashy, long train, and all this kind of stuff. That's what you're thinking in our custom today. Well, the the reality is there's not that many differences throughout history with the clothes that we wear for certain occasions. There's not that many differences. Okay, now we get to the attire of a harlot. You say, well, what does that look like? Well, what would you expect in your mind for a harlot to wear? I mean, someone's walking down the street selling her body. 
what would you expect that to look like? Something that's going to get the guy's attention. You know, look, there is that look. You, you know there is. If a person was playing a role on a TV show and they were going to play that part, there would be a certain way that they would dress. And so I think about that, and before I even go any farther in this, you would say, what woman in this world would ever want to be identified with a harlot, right? And now some people will get bent out of shape, and if you say that there's an attire of a harlot, they'll say, that's not for you to judge, and you're trying to say every lady out there that dresses this way or dresses that way looks like a harlot. Well, look, the Bible says that there's an attire of a harlot. That means there is something that people can identify with their eyes. Hey, that lady right, is not a good woman. Who, why would a lady want to dress like that? Why would, a, why would a dad allow her daughter to go out dressed like that? Or, her, or his wife to go out dressed like she's trying to present her body so that others might see that? Look at Proverbs chapter 7. Proverbs chapter 7. And we'll see one mention of uh, the attire of a harlot here. 7, uh, verse 10. Proverbs 7, verse 10. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. All right? Uh, look, it's, it's never, it's, it goes on to say she's loud and she's stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. Look, this is not a good woman. This is not a woman you'd want to be identified with. This is a bad woman. And the Bible talks about this lady in the twilight, in the evening, in the black and the dark night, a woman in the attire of a harlot. You say, well, what, what was it in that culture in that day? What did they look like? And go to Genesis chapter 38. Now, I've actually heard people try to argue about this and say, you can't make that comparison. Because the way that a woman dressed in the Bible days, who was a harlot, she was fully covered. And so you can't make a comparison and say, if a woman is not wearing enough clothes, that she looks like a harlot. Well, we'll get to that in a second, but look at Genesis 38, verse 15. This is why they say that. It says, when Judah saw her, he thought her to be an harlot because she had covered her face. And so just because the face is covered, they say, you know, that's the way all harlots dressed at that time, covered, face was covered. They didn't want anybody to see him and stuff like that. Well, first of all, it doesn't matter what they dressed like during that time. The fact was that there was somebody who was identified as a harlot. For whatever reason, the man looked at this woman and said, hey, she's a harlot, right? In today's culture, there is a woman, a type of woman that you would look at and say she's a harlot. But beyond that, I would say there are a, there's a lot more to that than just she had her face covered. All right. Now, obviously, you could think about some reasons she'd want to have her face covered. She wouldn't want everybody in society to see her and recognize who she was and all that stuff. Nowadays, they don't care. You know, it's all over, you know, social media and everything. They want to show themselves looking like that. OK, but this is uh, something that should should be something that would be a shameful for people to look to look like. Now, there are some reasons as you read some of these verses that there are some similarities between a harlot and a bride, all right? There are times uh, here where you'll see uh, some similarities. Um, there was another verse that I don't have written down. I can't remember what it was. Uh, and it talks about this. I think this is in Ezekiel, and it's talking about the woman dressing herself up. And you're saying, hey, it sounds to me like she's, it talks about having many lovers. Maybe I'm just not there yet. Uh, yeah, okay, so let me look at this. It says uh, in Jeremiah 4.30, it says, And when thou art spoiled... What wilt thou do? Though thou clothest, clothest thyself with crimson, though thou deckest thee with ornaments of gold, though thou rentest thy faith with, face with painting, in vain shalt thou make thyself fair. Thy lovers will despise thee. They will seek thy life. And so he's comparing them to a harlot. And he's saying, hey, look, even when you go out dressed in crimson, expensive clothing, and your face is all painted, we can imagine what that looks like. And you're looking all fair and you're decked with ornaments of gold and all this stuff. Now, wait a minute. That sounds similar to what somebody would look like who was a bride, decked with ornaments and all this kind of stuff. Well, here's the difference. 
that person did this because it was a special occasion. She's given herself to her husband. He's, a, you know, obviously attracted to her. She wants to look beautiful for him and all that kind of stuff on that special day. It's okay for a woman to get attention from her husband. But a person that would go around dressed like that all the time, even when her husband's not around, who's she trying to impress? Who's she trying? Trying to get attention from. Now, I'm not saying women should go in public. They should never wear makeup. And they should never dress nice and stuff like that. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying that there is that about a harlot who is trying to get it, always trying to get attention by the way she dresses and the way she wears her, uh, uh, decorates herself and the way she she walks and tries to get attention from people that is very close to that who we would say would be a bride. Okay, so it's okay to dress up but not with the intention of just attracting the attention of everybody around you. And there's lots of ways to try to attract attention. Uh, he talked about face painting. Uh, you know, who wants to, I personally, I, 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 I love my wife and she could, if she wants to wear makeup, well, that's great. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like lots of lipstick and all that stuff. She's often like, Oh, I look terrible. I didn't put my makeup on. I said, that's the way I like you to look. <laughs> all right. And so now I'm not saying ladies, look, some, some ladies need to wear makeup. Let's just, <laughs> let's just tell the truth. Okay. Some ladies need to wear makeup to look presentable, but you know, I don't think that people should be painting their faces, all these bright colors and, and their eyes are all just, uh, Hey, and then especially little kids, right? This is what, this is what training is about, right? Men should be able to look at their, their daughters and say, you're not going out like that. Whose attention are you trying to, who are, are you trying to, get? husbands should say to their wives, whoa, you shouldn't go out like that. Whose attention are you trying to get, right? This is why we need uh, training. And here's the thing. I believe the Bible makes it clear. It's the woman, it's the, the woman's, older woman's job to teach the younger women, right? One reason is because guys, guys don't really know what to say to women in regards to the way that they look and dress, certain things they do around the house. We certainly don't know how to do a lot of the woman things. And so the older women teach the women how to do those things. Men, that's just, that's just a category. Even when the Bible talks about preachers preaching to the church, it just kind of leaves the younger women void and says, older women, teach the older women to teach the younger women. All right. But here's one thing I can say that sometimes a woman doesn't even understand certain things that might attract a man. They just don't get it. They don't understand. They think, oh, look how beautiful you are. Yes, this is the way you should dress, and this is the way you... A man can look at that and say, you know what? And I've done this several times. My wife has said, do you see anything wrong with this? I'm not trying to embarrass my daughter, but a certain outfit that she wears, so do you see anything wrong with this? And what my wife is saying is, I don't see anything wrong with this, but you're the husband. You should know. And I'll look at that and say, yeah, I'd rather her not go out in that because it might attract somebody in a certain way. And my wife has actually said sometimes, I don't get it. I don't understand, but I'll just take your word for it. This is why husbands should be uh, the head of the house is doing that. Uh, and women, even though they are the ones training the, training the children, the, the daughters, the, hu the husband still has that final authority. And, and I, look, there is an attire of a harlot that we should not want women shouldn't want to portray that for sure. And the husbands shouldn't want their women to look like that. What a sad thing that there are actually men that want their wives to look like that and want to show, show them off in such a way. Uh, I, I think that is, that, that's gross. All right. So there is the attire of a harlot. Let me go back. I, I, I skipped ahead to find that verse here. Let me think here. So anyway, so I'm not against a, a little makeup for a woman to look presentable, but why try to paint your face and try to attract attention of people? Certainly, why would you want to look what the world would call sexy in public? Uh, there's, a, that's a, there's only bad reasons for that, okay? But 1 Timothy 2, 9 and 10 says this about the wives. It says, in like manner also that the women ordain, uh, or adorn themselves in modest apparel, with, sh with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. His point there, and then you can see the same thing in, in uh, 2 Peter, the point is simply this. Women, what you should be showing people is your godliness. You should be showing people your good works. That's what people should see when they look at you so they can glorify Christ, okay, by your good works. And same as men. Uh, we don't want to be just trying to attract attention by the clothes that we wear. 
uh, although there are times to dress up, there are times to look good. I'm not saying that everybody should go around looking sloppy and nasty all the time. And, uh, and what we want to glorify God with everything we do, even the clothes that we wear. All right, so attire of a harlot. The Bible talks about the attire, the attire of a bride and a bridegroom. The Bible talks about the attire of a man and the attire of a woman. Now, this is the one. This is the one that preachers today have say, I got to avoid this topic, right? And I can tell you right now, uh, as, a, as a pastor, uh, I have a lot of ladies in our church that don't see a, bra- a problem with uh, wearing pants, okay? Now, look at, not so much here, you know, that I know of, but in Iola particularly, and so that's been uh, something that I've had to deal with and, and think about. And, and uh, maybe there's a whole lot I could say about that that I don't think is, is necessary right now from the point of view of a pastor. But here's what I'll say is that Deuteronomy uh, 22 is in the Bible, and it's something that needs to be preached. And so here's what it says in Deuteronomy 22, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Now, look, we live in a culture, one of the reasons we don't think much about the argument about whether women should wear pants or not is because we live in a culture which is still trying to figure out who's men and who are women, I guess. (laughs) And we got men that are dressed. Look, when I was in high school, there were two years, and this was, I was in a military base at a, I, w- I wouldn't call it military school if people get the wrong idea about that. It was kind of like a public school, but it was for military kids on a military base, okay? And you wouldn't think that you would ever see this, you know, all these guys, Marines and Army and everything, and they've got their kids in that school. But I remember two years in a row, two different kids, two different boys, but two different, uh, two different year, years that a guy walked around campus every day in a dress, two different guys. And I remember as a kid thinking, why don't, why do they let him do that? It's so weird. Here's the strange thing about it. The guy didn't even act like a woman. Like, you know, most of the time when guys put on woman's apparel nowadays, it's disgusting. Like, I don't even like talking about it around the kids, but they do that. And then they, and then they look at those and they want to like be a different gender. Okay, but this guy wasn't even that way. And so here was the type of answer I got from adults. Just ignore it. He's just trying to show, like he's just trying to get attention and he's trying to express himself. And so he's doing that. And it was actually looked at like, hey, this guy's being weird, but they let him wear a dress and try to get attention. You could see him looking around and he didn't even try to act feminine. I mean, you can't not be feminine with a dress on, but I'm just saying he just was trying to get attention, right? But nowadays, it's opened up a whole world of, hey, men want to be women and women want to be men. And, hey, you should let us do that and we should express that. And it starts in the public schools, right? And it starts even before that because now they got kids that they're trying to enforce this idea that, hey, you should decide how you want to be. No, it's natural for men to be men and women to be women. And God said not only is it natural, he said, if you see a man wearing a woman's attire, that's an abomination. If you see a, 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 a man wearing a woman's attire, and vice versa, it is an abomination. We should want to be the gender that God made us. Amen. Okay, so this brings up a whole lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. But since the 1950s, 60s, 70s, women have been wearing pants, and they have women's pants, and they have men's pants, and so the argument goes not necessarily wearing the, uh, the garments of of a man. And so this is where it gets a little, little bit trickier, but here's the interesting thing. I have looked at feminine genes, right? For instance, feminine genes, you know what the feminine genes mean? It means they're cut to fit the form of a woman, right? Which means they're typically tighter. That brings a whole nother level of problems to the the way that a woman would, would dress. And so like the, even a feminine cut of pants it's like it just doesn't it doesn't actually seem right for a woman and so and the interesting thing about the uh the whole there's a a movement it's been going on for a while but there's been a movement among fashion designers okay 
to try to create, you know, artistic people are always trying to break the rules and come up with something else. And, and it's been this fad. They've been trying so hard to create a genderless clothing, blurring the genders, okay? And Target for a while, I don't think they do anymore. Last time uh, I was in Target, my wife was surprised because there were, there were like ladies, maybe they were supposed to be for men, I don't know, but there was like skirts and dresses and all this stuff. And she's like, I thought Target was trying to force all this like gender, uh, genderless clothing. I don't know if it's still a thing, but I know that when I was reading up on all these uh, people that were trying to create genderless clothing, they couldn't get it right. It just never seemed right because how do you create genderless? So here's what most genderless clothing was. There was this one company that advertised genderless clothing, and you know what it was? A pair of men's sweatpants and a pair of, and a man's sweatshirt, and women could wear it too. <laughs> there was, it wasn't genderless, so, so people were like, "Well, that's not really genderless. That's just kind of like guys' clothing that a woman could wear." Well, you try to make dresses for for men, and you're going to come up with the same problem, <laughs> right? So the idea is, hey, just try to be a man. And dress like a man. Just try to be a woman and dress like a woman. And here's the thing: we still have these. We still have these things that exist in our society. Still, they haven't done away with it yet. Okay. One is uh, the bathroom signs, <laughs> right? Look, I, look I, I'm going to still keep using it as long as I can. Now, I will say that they have tried. They're trying to do away with that. You know what I mean by the bathroom signs? The man has pants on and the woman has a skirt on, right? And they try to do away with that. And they're trying to come up with different ways to just put like the, the symbol, uh, whatever those symbols are called, the symbol for a man, symbol for a woman. They tried to, uh, I've even seen some that had actually had a woman in pants, but then they had a, a certain long hair. And it's like, oh, you're trying to say women have to have long hair. <laughs> and so they can't get it. They're so confused. They're trying so hard to blur the genders and you can't do it. There's male and there's female. Okay, and so they're trying to, but we still have that bathroom symbol. Hey, this is a universal sign, you know. We still have uh, the fact that when a, a freak man wants to look like a woman, what does he try to put on? He tries to put on a dress or a skirt. That's the only way he can identify and make it look different, right? So he tries to put that on. And if you see a woman who really wants to be a man, she's probably going to put a suit on right, with a tie or something and, and try to look like a man or she's going to say, well, I'm just a tomboy and she's going to wear jeans and a t-shirt, men's jeans and a men's t-shirt, you know. And so, uh, look, there's a lot of arguments that can be made and I understand it. Um, I, I honestly, I, I've heard a lot of people say, I probably should think this argument through. Okay. I've heard a lot of people say, though, okay, would, would you be offended if a man walked in here with a skirt? Absolutely. Amen. And they'll say, well, why aren't you offended if a woman walks in with a pair of pants? There is a difference. <laughs> okay, there is a difference. Now, it's not right that our society is this way, but there are a certain things that are kind of become norms in society, you know, and as, as, the, as the, the, the abnormal gets farther and farther one direction, what seems normal, right, also goes that direction. Now, look, the Bible is our standard. I understand that. But again, you have the whole world full of Christians that are, that are I mean, pastors' wives that are getting up there in jeans and pants and all that stuff. And so they're teaching all these people, hey, there's nothing wrong with that. After all, how are you going to go work in the garden? You know, if you got a skirt on, how are you going to do this activity or that activity? And look, I could preach a whole message about that. Right, but I don't think I need to delve into that any more than I have in other sermons uh, at this point. But the the but the final, you know, I can't tell people now. I will say this: that if I have a woman on the platform for any reason doing something, whether it's playing the piano or whatever, uh, I would put a prerequisite that she has to wear a skirt or a dress. Okay? Somebody be like, "Oh, you're so legalistic." Well, you guys wouldn't say that, but. But no, because I am the pastor and I have the uh, uh, ability to set that guide, uh, that guideline, I'm going to do that. But I'm not going to go into somebody's house and tell a man, hey, you got to make your woman dress, your wife dress this way or that way. And I'm not going to go try to change everybody uh, in that way. But I am going to preach the Bible. And I do believe that the Bible says that there's a man's attire and a woman's tire, uh, attire. And I think instead of trying to just see how close we can get to that line, 
We just need to try to be as distinctly different as we can from one another. Okay, and, and for the most part, even like I said, those who don't have a problem with it um, have respected that, and typically they'll come to church. Uh, you know, I've had some ladies show up in church in, in a pair of pants and said, I'm sorry, I didn't have time to go home, but it was either don't come to church or wear this, and that that's a whole other story, and it depends on the person's level of spirituality, how long they've been coming to church, and all kinds of factors that go into that that maybe we can talk about that in more detail another day. But the Bible does talk about an attire of a man, attire of a woman. By the way, I didn't write the scripture down or, or, or plan on going into great detail about it, but it does talk about men having short hair, women having long hair. You know, again, how long is long? How short is short? Look, don't try to see how close you can get. Just say, hey, I know this is long hair. I know this is short hair. And so I'm going to go with uh, my gender, right? Nobody should be looking at you down the street saying, is that a man or a woman? I can't tell, right? That's the idea. Try to look like your gender. Otherwise, it's an abomination, right? Because you're trying to look like the other gender. All right, the number, uh, number f- let me see, where was that? Number four, I won't spend much time on, on this one really, but there is an attire of a sorrowing person, okay? The Bible talks about a widow's garment, it talks about uh, those who are mourning. They'll put on sackcloth, and and those who are, um, uh, you know, it, trying to repent, kind of like fasting. They'll spend the time. And, and look, I'm not expecting people to necessarily go out and buy sackcloth, but we do understand this. Hey, if we go to a funeral, we usually wear something black, right? That's kind of a traditional. Hey, there's a time for mourning. You know, we we won't uh, certainly try to be flashy or anything. Uh, but in the Bible does use that a few times about a widow's garment or different things they'll put on when they're, they're mourning. And then the last one is the attire of a priest or a prophet or something like that. And I want to develop, I want to devote a whole sermon, like I said, to the attire of a priest or somebody who'd be in, in the ministry representing the church and, and being lead in the leadership of the church. So I'll preach on that another day, but the Bible does talk a lot about that. Uh, one of the most often times the Bible talks about garments on somebody is talking about the priest and everything. So today we live in a society that just tries to break all the normals. <laughs> everything that's, that seems that we think is normal, the society tries to break that, okay? People don't know how to uh, dress for special occasions, celebrations. Uh, uh, I think there's a time. I think it's it, here. I, I actually think it's good to teach. I, man, I've thought about doing this sometime. Teach men that don't know, they've never been taught, hey, how do I polish my shoes? Uh, at Heartland, they actually did that. And, you know, hey, some people think, oh, they went overboard. They're too worried about guys having shiny shoes and all that. No, I think it's good. Men should know how to shine their shoes. But, you know, hey, before somebody goes, uh, even, the, uh, even the military, before they go into battle, it's like a tradition. They know how to shine their shoes, polish the brass, <laughs> you know, and uh, I guess not. That's kind of dress that's their dressy occasions. But I think there is a time to be presentable in that way. And so shiny shoes, hey, there's a certain uh, things that ha- that never go out of style. I think that's one thing that guys should learn, by the way, as I'm kind of getting off trail here a little bit, but guys should learn. Uh, there are some standard type stuff that never goes out of style. Hey, don't just try to jump on every fad, but there are some standard stuff that goes over. You know, how long should your tie be? You know, what what you wear, uh, you know, what kind of matches. Like, I'm probably a bad person to, to, to give the class. But there are some kind of traditional things that guys need to learn how to do. Hey, when you wear a suit, uh, what is the right length, you know, so you don't look sloppy. Uh, there are some different things that I believe should be taught to, to young men. And uh, our world's got away from having any kind of standards in that way. And they just kind of wear whatever they want to every occasion. We should learn how to dress up, but we also should learn that, hey, it's not all about being flashy and always looking uh, fancy and impressing everybody with the clothes that you wear. Uh, That is not what we're about. We're about glorifying God, even in the way that we dress. Uh, People don't know how to dress in such a way that they don't look like harlots. And let me just say this, men, you say, well, that only applies to the women. Well, there are men that kind of look almost like they're trying to sell their body, too, (laughs) you know? There are some men look like they're going after the wrong gender. (laughs) 
and they're uh, men that don't know how to dress anymore like their gender, obviously. They don't know how to dress modesty. They don't know how to dress decently and to be covered and, and all that. And I think that it's our job to preach that. It's our job to teach the next generation that. The reason it's getting worse and worse and worse is because nobody's teaching them. And so I think that we ought to, hey, the Bible has a lot to say about it. We ought to be preaching it. We might not get it perfectly every time, but we need to be standing up and saying it because nobody else is going to, that's for sure. All right, people don't know how to dress, uh, yeah, like I said, according to their gender, but we ought to, hey, men should be concerned about being manly. Women should concern about being feminine. And look, when the world is trying to tell you, hey, you're wrong for feeling that way or whatever, it's because they're trying so hard to be abnormal, right? And to move what's normal farther and farther away. Hey, don't fall for it. Don't fall for it. Just keep on following the, the word of God and keep on doing the best you can to dress appropriately for all occasions. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you for your word and it guides us and sometimes uh, set standards that we don't even completely understand. But help us, Lord, to decide in our life that we're going to try to uh, to walk uh, as, as, as close as we can to under, uh, what we understand to be your will and not to see how close we can get to breaking your rules and your guidelines for us. But, Father, in all things, help us to seek to glorify you. Give us wisdom. Fill us with your spirit that we might know uh, wisdom and make right decisions that we might present ourselves as godly men and godly women. Pray you be honored and glorified with, uh, with that, even in our, in our clothing and our attire. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.